Zulkibla'i Imam Asim, Hafidahullah, to come up and enlighten us with his words. We welcome him with, a, um, with an array of naras. Naray takbir. Allahu Akbar. Naray Ya Rasulullah. Naray Hadri. Ya Ali. Naray Tahkik. Akhtar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> هل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون صدق الله مولانا العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace salutations and blessings upon the best of creation the jewel and crown of creation the beloved of Allah Almighty the coolest of our eyes the purpose of our lives the reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls, the most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one, undoubtedly he is the most beautiful. None other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallam. MashaAllah, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be back here in Peterborough once again. And I am very happy for the reason why I have been invited here. And I'll mention the reason for my happiness after mentioning that, alhamdulillah, we have on this stage at this moment in time for the respected Imam Mawlana Hazrat Sayyid Asad Shah Sahib Zida Majduhu Wa Atarallahu Umrahu My friendship with Sayyid Asad Shah Sahib Qibla must go back maybe 10, 12, 13, probably more years. And I met Al-Basil Shah Sahib during my days as a student in Jami Al-Karam. And then I maintained a link with them, especially during the years when I was Imam in East London Barking. And Ghalib at that time Shah Sahib was uh, residing and living in Woking. And thereafter, many a time we have met, and it's so refreshing to sit with the Qibla Shah Sahib here tonight. He has now moved and been here in Peterborough for the past four years. And we have Imams and scholars in different fields. Many an Imam and scholar that has graduated have gone on to become teachers in schools, primary and secondary schools, have gone on to become university lecturers, they have gone on to become successful businessmen, whilst also being an Imam and a scholar of the deen. And the Shah Sahib, his speciality is that for the best part of 12 years, 
they have served in Her Majesty's prison service as an Imam. And the one in Peterborough is maximum security prison. So you will have some of the biggest gangsters that are in this prison. Shasab is the Imam and guide. He is there transforming them, reforming them. This is not an easy job. Wallahi, it's not an easy job to speak to minds which are disturbed. You know, mass murderers, people who committed acts of terror or potential acts of terror, disturbed, lost people to be able to help and assist them to become better people reform them, change them, it's not an easy job. You've got to have a lot of mental strength and courage yourself. And you've got to have expertise, knowledge, qualities. Not every man can walk into the prison service and talk to a convict. It's not easy. And within the prison service, the strength of the brotherhood, of what is there and how it is, it's not easy, but they are serving Islam in this capacity. And Islam is a religion for all facets of life. Islam isn't just for the masjid. Islam is a way of life for every aspect of life. From prior to the birth of your child to after his death, Islam is a way of life that continues into your grave, into the hereafter, and inshallah will end for us when we all inshallah will enter into Jannatul Firdaus, the gardens of paradise. Amen. Amen. This is what Islam is a way of life. Islam isn't just you pray five times salah or you fast in Ramadan and look, I'm a top Muslim. No. <laughs> To be a top Muslim, a good Muslim, you've got to adopt and implement all aspects and way of life that Islam teaches us. And who best taught this, who best reflected this, than Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is his sunnah, it is his blessed seerah, his blessed life that we must learn and then teach to our children. So the Shah Sahib is here, and he will be the final speaker. He will be sharing a few final words before the ending du'a, the concluding du'a. MashaAllah, Ari Isa Khan, have Siraj, others from Bradford have come uh, to recite Na'ad Sharif, have Siraj teaches here. And that's a long way to come to teach. I think uh, without putting his opportunities, Atif needs to find local teachers so we can give work to Siraj in Bradford <laughs> because it's a long trek to come man a hundred plus miles and I hope you look after him well Atif is a good man Atif is a very good man and I'll come to Atif Mashallah I came today with our brother Abdullah Hakani and young Mustafa we came he came from Manchester, stopped in Bradford, picked me up, and then we, in the car together, came uh, here to Peterborough to speak. And for him to recite and read, and he shall be reciting and reading Na'ad Sharif after me. And I thank him for uh, allowing me to ride with him and to come here. I didn't fancy driving, to be honest with you, those days I've gone. <laughs> when I would drive to Fezani Medina or Rosia Masjid comfortably. Now I, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 32 years old. May Allah give us tawfiq to carry on serving the deen. And it's Valentine's Day tomorrow as well. So, you know, I don't want to say the next thing, I'll keep it to myself. Um, somebody might end up making a meme. I think there's already a meme anyway. But nevertheless, um, 
I'll, I'll save myself from making a, a, getting another meme made out of me. But it's my birthday tomorrow, I'll be 32 and, you know, I think the first time I came to Peterborough was probably 10 years ago, in 2012, 2013. And one of the first people to call me to Peterborough was Atif. And my friendship with him goes a very long way. Uh, he's always been a genuine, sincere guy. He's got a very good heart. Who wants to give back to his people, his community. And for years he called me. Then I went on a sabbatical, like Pep Guardiola. <laughs> And he stopped calling me. <laughs> and then he started harassing me again. And I said, you finally remembered me. And he says, Look, you've got to come down. And I'm not going to lie to you. I had forgotten about today, had he not messaged me, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday. <laughs> so I had forgotten. I forgot to write it down in, uh, on, in the iPhone, the diary, that I've got to talk in Peterborough. But he's regularly in contact. We discuss things, ideas. And when he told me that he's purchased this site, mashallah, I was so happy for him. Because he is somebody in this community who is forward thinking. He's concerned about the state of the youth. What vested interest does he have? You know, his risk is written. He will earn, if it's through this or whatever it may be, from the other work. If I'm not mistaken, Atif is a teacher as well. He's, he teaches. And you've got to have a passion. You've got to have a vision. You've got to have some drive and motivation to take a big step of buying a building mm. and then maintaining that building and upgrading the building. <coughs> and all of which for whom? All of this is for the children. It's for the kids here in Peterborough. I'm not going to sit here and uh, talk bad of what others are doing. They are doing great work. We have to praise them for the masajid that our fathers and elders have built. Big masajid. They are running these masajid, mashallah. There is no denying that. It's not easy to run a masjid. There are bills, there are overheads. There are so many different opinions around one table. There's so many different ways of thinking. Some want to move forward. Some are happy how they are. This is the reality. We know how masjids are. We were just talking about it, me and Shazab. That these are how masjids are. We, we've got to live with this. We pray that they all become forward thinking. And that they give more back to their children, the community, the youth. And... Amongst them, you always find people like Atif in all communities who want to give back to the children, who want to give back to the community, who want to make a change, a difference. You know, he's not an alim of the deen. He doesn't have hundreds of thousands following him on social media. He's just one man with his band, you know, his, his group, his team, voluntarily trying to put a facility in place for the children here in Peterborough. I educate. I educate is the name of the center. And the core principle of the center is what? Education. It's all about educating the youth. Without any, without knowledge, without education, you will not succeed in life the way you need to. Whether that education makes you a millionaire or not, the fact that you have in knowledge, I believe knowledge is one of the greatest gifts Allah has given us. Subhanallah. Nothing can beat the power of knowledge. But with knowledge comes great responsibility. Knowledge also needs to be channeled and controlled. For who had more knowledge than the devil? Who knew more than him? Shaitan had a lot of in. He had a lot of knowledge. <coughs> Shaitan, the devil, our enemy, Lucifer, Satan, he had a lot of knowledge. His knowledge taught him that he's better than everyone. 
His knowledge taught him to become arrogant and proud. Whereas the knowledge that Allah has given to his chosen people teaches them to be humble. <laughs> knowledge, the true fruit and benefit of knowledge will make you realize that in reality I have very limited knowledge. I don't have any. An alim, he will always never consider himself to be an alim. There's a saying, Man qala ana alimun fahuwa jahilun. He who says that I am an alim, in reality he is a jahil. For he has defeated the objective of knowledge. Knowledge should not make you think that you are better than others. Knowledge should not make you think you are superior to others. This is what the devil thought with his knowledge. He had a lot of ill. His knowledge promoted him to become the leader of all the angels. Yet he himself is not an angel. He himself is not an angel. Prior to becoming the cursed one, the devil, shaitan, becoming Iblis from Ablas and Shatan, before becoming the devil and Allah Almighty, who has more knowledge than Allah know? His knowledge is infinite and divine. It has no limit. It has no beginning, it has no end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. When he said, وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ كَانَ in the Arabic language is Madi, past tense. Allah Almighty is saying that we ordered. Remember when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam out of honor and respect to his ilm, to this creation of Allah, out of respect to him, bow down to him. فَسَجَدُوا They all bow down. They all prostrated to Sayyidina Adam. إِلَّا except Iblis. Aba was takbar. He refused and he became arrogant. Allah said he was from those who denied. Mm. Yani Allah is telling us from his infinite knowledge. Allah is telling us, I always knew this one was going to reject me. He would make the choice to reject me. He will disobey me. He will be the leader of the disobedient. Aba was takbar wa kana min al-kafirin. And he became this. He was destined to become the devil. And then this devil was to become the biggest enemy to man. But look at the amount of knowledge he had. The levels of progression, promotion that he went through. That Allah Almighty would give him command, he would tell the angels what to do. He was a leader of Sayyidina Jibreel and Mikael, Serafin and Israel. All the angels, all the malaika, but his one act of disobedience because of his pride and arrogance, he said, Ana I am better than him. How many kids today? How many youngsters today? How many boys today? How many men today? How many old men today have this morsel, atom, grain worth of arrogance in their heart? We all have pride. You know, I'm better than him. Maybe I'm better than him in wealth. I've got more money, he's got less. I'm more fitter and better than him in health. He's not as healthy as I am. I'm better than him in looks. I look better than him. I'm better than him in following. I'm better... How, how much of a devil can you be? <laughs> that you think you are better than him? This is what made him the devil. This is what destroyed him. He said, I am better than him. When Allah said, why didn't you bow down to Adam? He said, You created me from fire. You created him from clay. The nature of fire is such that when you put oil on it, it rises. Yani fire, which is one of the elements of this world, of, of earth, of the universe. How many elements are there in the universe? Four elements. What are they? Fire, 
It's not a science lesson. We leave that to Atif. <laughs> you can teach me. I've forgotten myself. Earth. Fire, water, Soil. Earth. earth and wind. Wind. Yes. Yes. Right? Is correct? Yes. These are the four elements of the universe, of the world. Fire, the characteristic of this element is what? It rages. Fire rages. And the characteristic and Allah, how Allah created, look the wisdom. He created us from the element of this world, this universe called earth, mud, clay, soil. When you throw it, it's nature, by nature, what does it do? It drops. It goes low. He says, I've created you from this ground for you in the end to return back to this ground. This is why when you go bury someone, what would you read when you throw, take, they say you should take three scoops of earth and throw it on the person. What do you read at that time? Do you know what the dua is? What the verses of the Quran you should read when you take one, you lower the person into the grave, you put the slabs over him, and then the, 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 the man who works, the undertaker at the graveyard, he says, now take your turns, one by one, go and put soil on. And the other etiquette is that you throw three scoops. What do you read? وَمِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى These three ayahs of the Quran. You pick one scoop. وَمِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ We created you يعني from this earth. مِنْهَا From the earth. وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ and the second scoop you say, when you throw it, you read this ayah. And we shall return you back to this earth. We created you from it, we'll send you back. And then the third scoop, when you throw it, you say, And once more, we are going to resurrect you. We will take you out from this. When? When will you get back out of the grave? On the day of judgment. Yani, Allah Almighty is telling us that this element that I created you from, I created man, I fashioned him. I fashioned man in the best form. Then I blew into him from my spirit. Not uh, literally. Do not take this as a literal form. Allah Almighty literally didn't do this. And theologically, we could discuss this at a later date. But do not take it literally. But the nature that I created this man from this earth, his nature, by nature, he's humble because he drops. This is what we've created you from. The nature of the devil, shaitan, was fire. So he said, you created me from fire and you created him from earth. I am better than him because the logic is what? When you stoke the fire, what happens? It rises. By nature, I will rise. <coughs> and in his nature, he will drop. Therefore, I am better than... He used logical. He used logic to prove to Allah, attempt to prove to Allah... How he is better than him? Sayyidina Adam. And Allah Almighty said, This is, his, this is the reason for his destruction because he thought he's better than him. Allah. Arrogance, pride. Allah Almighty in Al Hadith Al Qudsi said, Al Kibriya'u Kibriya'i. That being proud. Al-Kibriya'u Rada'i is my cloak. I have the right to wear this cloak. Allah Almighty has the right to be proud. Why? In what aspect? He is the creator of everything. Whoever shares with me in this, then he has associated with me and will be entered into the fire. We cannot join Allah Almighty in these matters. We must humble ourselves before Allah. You are not better than anyone. 
You mustn't think this. And spirituality of this deen, knowledge teaches you, true knowledge teaches you to always consider the other better than you. He is better than me. I am not better than him. The moment you think that you are better than someone, you are treading on a destructive path. You have become from the people of the devil. You should always remain humble. You must always lower yourself. Remain ajiz. Adopt tawadur. Man tawada alillahi rafa'ahullah. He who humbles himself for Allah's sake, Allah will elevate his maqam. Allah will raise his maqam. Allah will give him izza. Allah will honor him. Allah Almighty will increase his risk. Allah will make his children beautiful and obedient to him. And who do we bow down before other than Allah? No. We only bow to Allah. We only worship Allah Almighty. But we humble ourselves before our parents. We don't act arrogant in front of them. We don't disrespect them or disobey our parents. We listen to what they say and what they teach us. They have lived life longer than me and you. They know better than me and you. If they say something, they're saying it for your benefit. They're not saying it because they're your enemies. They're saying it because they have love for you. They want to protect you. If your father has been on one road and he's found that on that road there is an area where there is a ditch, a pothole, and he's walked into it and twisted his ankle, tomorrow that road hasn't been fixed. It's the same road, the same street. And you're going to walk there. He's going to tell you, son, there is a certain area. Make sure you don't twist your ankle there. He says, how do you know that? Because I've been there. I've done that. I've twisted my ankle. I don't want you to be harmed in the same way. This is what my parents tell you. Don't do this or don't do this. Or this is too much. Because they know life more than us. We must respect that. We must be humble before them. Imam Ghazali teaches in his book, O Son, in this book he teaches adab towards the father. And from the etiquette towards the father, you should not stand before him. When he stands, you shouldn't stand before he stood. You should not sit before he has sat. You should not walk in front of him. When you meet him, you should kiss his hand. This is your father. This is your king. Give adab to him. Respect him. Doesn't matter what your father does. Doesn't matter what life he lives. Simply the fact that he's the, your father and brought you into this world, honor him. Respect him. Don't speak when he is speaking. It is even said out of adab and love and respect for him. Don't even put your eye into his eye. Lower your eyes when your father speaks. Today, kids will look into their dad's eyes like they want to do a staring competition. <laughs> they will walk and run before their father. They will disrespect them in so many ways, not remembering that this is your father. Tomorrow he may reach an old age. He will need your time. You're going to be old one day, inshallah. You're younger now. When you're young, you know, you don't, you don't realize, you don't see what the world will bring you. It's a dangerous world out there. It's a scary world out there. That's why we need havens like this, safe places, for our children to come and educate, learn the deen with a mix of spirituality, of humility, of respect and tolerance. You know, these all mixed together. Tomorrow it will produce the leaders. Tomorrow it will produce success. You mustn't forget that along with this knowledge comes etiquettes, mannerisms, come adab, humility. And with this knowledge comes what? Responsibility. With this knowledge comes what? A sense of power. Allah gives, empowers the one who is best bestowed with this knowledge. And we need to understand this. And with this knowledge, when you come to study and educate yourself, it takes you out of darkness and brings you into light. It illuminates your mind. Otherwise you wouldn't know had you not been taught, had you not learned. 
is the power of knowledge. Imam Sayyiduna Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu, the great fourth Khalifa of Islam, one of the greatest men to set foot on this earth after the Anbiya wa Rasul. Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu anhu, he mentions in a very famous saying, how knowledge is superior, better, greater than wealth, than money. Money will remain in this dunya. You will be wealthy in this dunya. It will follow you to your grave and then come back and be distributed amongst your children. Mm. Knowledge, it will help you in this dunya and will also help you in your grave. Yeah. You chase the dollar, you chase the dime, you chase the dunya, you chase the money. We all want to be rich, we want to get rich or die trying to get rich. We all want an easy, comfortable life. Who doesn't want a comfortable life? Who doesn't want to live a footballer's life? When I say a footballer's life, I mean you have the cars, you have the houses, you have so much wealth, you don't know where to start. We all want that. We want to be rich. We want to wear good gowns. But remember, Biggie Smalls, once upon a time, he said, more money, more problems. <laughs> There's a reason why even he said, more money, more problems. He knew with money comes responsibility and problems. You ask a millionaire, how do you, how do you sleep at night? I got 50 properties rent to collect. I got 100 properties rent to collect. I've got this guy, he doesn't work right. I've got to sack him, get another guy. Then you go ask a man who has one house, you know, and he says, I sleep comfortably. Alhamdulillah. I don't have to worry about if next man is taxing me. Whether I'm going to avoid the taxman from him taxing me. <laughs> you know, I have, life's easy, bro. We have one house. He says to the millionaire, how many times do you eat? He says, I eat the best steaks London can offer. How many times? I can only eat it once a day. I have good breakfast, I have nice tea, then I have dinner. He says, I eat three times as well. What's the difference between me and you? <laughs> you go out and spend hundreds of pounds on a while you stay. I go home and my wife makes me nice roti and dal. <laughs> it does the job. You eat and I eat. What you eat comes out anyway. It doesn't stick around long. Because Allah created you with a digestive system. Imagine you just ate and you couldn't digest. Man, we'd be out here. <laughs> Look at the wisdom in the way Allah has created man. Subhanallah. Everyone must say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Any, the majesty and glory of Allah, the greatness of Allah, how Allah Almighty created me and you. But we eat three times, they, a millionaire eats three times. Where do you sleep? I sleep in a comfy bed. I sleep on the floor. How many hours do you get? I get seven, eight. I, said, I get seven, eight on the floor as well. <laughs> yani you sleep, I sleep. You drive a car to work, You've got a Ferrari, you've got a Rolls Royce, you've got a Phantom, you've got a Ghost, you've got this, you've got that. You've got a SV, you've got a RS6. Yours is a bit louder than mine. But I drive an Audi or a Nissan or a Ford Fiesta, not a fancy car. It gets me to work as well. Yours may be slightly quicker and better looking than mine, but it does the same job. You eat steak, I eat roti. You eat and you're full, I eat and I'm full. It does the same job. You spend more, I spend less. <laughs> you live in a mansion with 15 rooms. You've got to get a butler to clean the ones. Half your family don't want to live with you. Your children have moved out. I live in one simple house, two bedrooms. Me and my wife and my son. They sleep comfortably, I sleep comfortably. You sleep in a huge king size, triple king size bed. I sleep in a single bed. You get eight hours, I get eight hours. Brother, what's the difference then? What are we chasing? We want a comfortable life in a world which will end. Like how, how foolish and stupid can man be that we chase comfort in a world that is destined to end. Yet we forget about the luxuries and comfort the next world has to offer which will be never-ending and eternal. No. I mean, a, a man with sense would think in this moment in time, we're all thinking, he's right, we'll go home, then we'll check our e-bill, and we'll say, ah, oh, Mr. Payment, man, mortgage. <laughs> Back to the dunya, that's the truth. 
We live in this dunya. I'm not saying don't live in the dunya. If you earn halal and you're a millionaire, you live, bro, like a millionaire. Don't stop it. <coughs> you drive a Ferrari, you earn it halal. Allah give you more. Allah. Islam does not say, don't chill. Don't live this life. You can. Wow. One condition. It's got to be halal. Mm. Don't rob nobody. Don't rob the system. Don't steal. Don't do none of these things. Don't sell drugs. Don't make money like this. Earn halal. Work hard. Work hard with your hands. And what's better than working hard? Work smart. Smart work will always beat the hard work. Sometimes it's not how hard you work. It's how smart you work. I say to Imam Adil all the time. I say, you work hard. I try to work smart. There's a difference. You go out and travel and do all this. May Allah reward him, for example. He does a lot of traveling. We, every weekend he's in another city teaching Aqidah and he's here, I think, next week in Peterborough. When is he? March 13th. March the 13th, my brother will be here teaching Aqidah. Tawheed and Risalat and all these subjects. Join his course, learn the deen. It's free. It's free, isn't it? It's free. It's free. You're doing it free everywhere. He will give you a book and you will learn your deen. You will come out of there thinking, wow, mashallah, that was a lot to take in. But you know what? I can say at least I know Allah. I know Rasulullah. I know my deen. I know what I need to know as in my aqidah to become a Sunni Muslim. You know, it's been corrected. It's been refined. It's a revision for those who know. But he works very hard. Me, I don't work as hard anymore, as in I don't travel as much. Today was probably the furthest I've been in the last month or so. But we try to work smarter and the work we're doing is different to the level of work he does. We work locally in, in, in our community, grassroots, back to the roots. That's what I do. That's what I want to go back to. And I'll come to that at the end, part of the vision and mission that Atif has, that we've discussed, and that you need to implement here as well. But sometimes it's not about how hard you work, it's how smart you work. Sometimes it could be smart work, it could be hard work. My father he used to say to me all the time, Allah gave him Jannah. He said, We don't charge. I don't need to go away thinking, I've got, you know, uh, demands before I turn up. I have no demands whatsoever. I could come here, I could feed me and go home without giving me a penny, no problem. I've got no issues. It's not the end of the world. We have no demands. But he said, look, you go and they gift you money. Yeah. How much? 100, 200, 300 pounds for a bayan? I said, yeah. He said, put the asa aftal on it, the on the Yeah, my father used to say that to me. He could put the asa raat puri, lane, taxi, kamane, pon, pon, jori, jori, jori. Ita rati, saayit, satar, asi, nabay, so pon kamane ya. Taxi, ach again, takes lane ya, loka ki chai, galia khwane ya, loka, galia dene na prun. You go to one bayan, 200 pounds, in Milan time, you might have three bayans, four with Karishab. People give, we don't demand. We are not from those who demand. How many of you demand that, to be honest? Very He's not your financier. I know he's rich now. <laughs> Reis is an old friend. Reis is old, old. The early days Reis was, they was young then. How old are you now, Reis? 21. How old were you when I first came? Maybe 12, 13? 10 years, 10 years. 12 years old. 12 years old. Now he's 21. Mustafa was 11 years old. Now he's 20. He says 9, 10 years Imam Sahib will be listening to your talks. People like Reis and these years now, they've been listening to these bayans, for example. Reis always messages me. Now he's for. Stop messaging me because he thinks I don't reply to you. <laughs> but I don't forget that is. And I'm giving an example. Never, we've never said I demand this much. They ask how much. I say, bro, don't worry, man. Whatever you want to give, you give. I'm not bothered. I have no demands. You know, you want, you do. But I'm, I'm saying my father would work hard. But I, but he never studied. In Pakistan, I'm using my own father as an example. He did five Jamaat in Pakistan. Five Jamaat is Dorich, Asanijari, in learning the school system at Shasha uh, Kibla. What was what, the primary school? Secondary Ponchain. My dad just studied in primary school and then stopped studying. He says, I don't want to study. My granddad says, 
यू गोट टू वेज इन लाइफ या पढ़ो तो या कम करो जराई दो वर्किंग ओ यू स्टडी मदर से जाइए स्टडी एंड यू नो माय फादर I use his example many a time now. My father, because many of you can relate to this, we our fathers come from the homeland. Mm-hmm. My father, fir pathe par kam karne rin. Do you know what this means? Pathe par kam karna. They used to go and work where they made make bricks. They would bake bricks. So what do you call that? Brickyard. Brickyard. Brick used to work in the brickyard. And back then there were no cars we were from a very poor family my granddad was in a rich man he didn't have jadat and zameen and this and the other my great granddad was a darwish he was fakir he was a man of god they lived they did days work a day the next day went out did a days work a day they didn't join money and buy this man a land no no not none of that i'm telling my own story my father then would go in the brickyard and he would bake bricks at the age of 13 14 15 he was the eldest of eight boys wow. i have no auntie no pupi my dad was the eldest of eight brothers oh, of those eight now four have died three of my uncles have died one at the age of 24 one 28 one 32 two years ago and my father was 49 all young deaths heart attacks brain hemorrhage Give me my own story and example. My father worked hard. He came to this country, went and worked in the factories for just before the factories closed. In the early 90s, he worked in the factories, late 80s, early 90s. Then he went into taxiing. He worked in restaurants. He worked hard. And one day he said to me, and and everything he earned, he earned, he joined, and my mum would say, "Ina ki prao, not in the dunya." We never took a student loan out to go and pay off a student loan for example in a university is good become doctors become solicitors become engineers become medics fantastic be successful in life do good in life make your parents proud But me i want to become an imam it was unheard of so i went to study my mother would join my my brother imam adil would work they would work 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 just to pay for my education Because at the same time they had a mortgage to pay, they had money to send to my grandparents in Pakistan to make their life easy. They had to save money to buy a house and eventually in the future or at that point paying the current house off. Yeah. These men, they know how hard it is. You don't know how hard it is. You don't know what your dad goes through. Mm. You live easy life. You want everything on the plate. Ask him, did he have everything on the plate? It's hard, bro. When you become old, you will remember this speech. When Sayyid Ali Imam Sahib once told me how hard, man, I wish I was young again. Mm-hmm. And everything was on my dad's head. He paid for my PS5 and Fortnite, the victory royales and battle royales. <laughs> He paid for all my FIFA tournaments. He did everything for me, because this is my dad. This is what my dad would do for me. He bought me clothes. He bought me trainers. He did everything. When you get become a dad, then you have to think. Oh, now my son is asking for trainers and clothes. I have to go work. If I don't have money, how am I going to give him food? How Allah will give, but you've got to. We got to. You're a wasila. You're a sermon. You've got to work. My father worked, worked, worked for us to study. He didn't make no properties. He didn't live none of that life. He had no property to his name. He had one desire, one wish. के पाकिस्तान को ठिकाना हो जाए अपने ग्रांच और अल्लाह गेव हिम दिस बिफोर ही डाइड ही ओनली लिव्ड फोर वीक्स केम बैक टू इंग्लैंड सिक्स मंथ्स लेटर ही पास्ड अवे इवन ओ इन्होंने नसीब नहीं सी के ही कुड गो चिल देन नाउ दैट्स ऑन आवर हेड वी विल गो स्पेंड आवर टाइम माय फादर वांट टू डू इट फॉर अस ही कॉल अ देम माय सन्स गो टू पाकिस्तान टू टेरेसन सो ही हैज लेफ्ट योर होम देयर आई लेफ्ट योर होम इन इंग्लैंड टेक केयर ऑफ योर मम दैट्स But I'm giving you example. My father, four years ago, nearly passed away. He worked hard, and the result of his hard work is who? His investment was what? Was me, my brothers, the dean. This is his investment. This is all he wanted to do. He never stopped us, and that hard work paid off. It was halal. 
This is the barakah of halal. This is the barakah of hard work. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man jadda wajada. He who works hard, he who struggles, he will be rewarded. He will be given. Today, tomorrow, one day after so long, an old man, he was planting a seed. His son came to him and said, what are you doing? Gurbat, see, poor people, said, I'm planting a seed. He said, what do you mean you're planting a seed? This tree will not be reaching its maximum potential whilst you're alive, you're going to die. He said, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for your children. I will die, but today I plant. Tomorrow you will water and irrigate. And the day after, your children will eat from its fruits. Subhanallah. What have you planted? What seed have you sown? Question. As fathers, you should think. What are we producing? Because we are the offspring of our parents. We are the result of their hard work. We are the result of their tarbiyah. Mm. And we've got to ask ourselves, what are we doing for them? And the least you can do, and to conclude on this, is to support organizations and education centers like this. Bro, you spend thousands on clothes, etc. Even one percentage donate and help Atif here. He's not asked me to say nothing. Wallahi al Allah is my witness. Not once did he ask me to mention what I'm saying. But from my heart, I know the struggle he will go through because we went through it once upon a time to open a center as well. I know the hard work that he will go through, the hardship. And you need financial support. We need wealthy businessmen to give money towards a project like this. You know, people say, bro, he's doing good work, help him. Someone donate a PlayStation 5. Someone donate a 55, 65 inch TV. Somebody donate a pool table. Say, no problem, I'll pay for it. So how at least they playing a pool table or on a computer rather than selling weed on the street. <laughs> They're here, not there. Yeah. You're saving their life, aren't you? Yeah. You're giving them a good time, aren't you? So why not? <laughs> this is an investment for you. This idara is an investment for your children. This is a safe haven. And this is exactly, exactly what for years I've been saying. And today, friends like Atif are doing this. That a solution to the problems that our youth are facing, the dangers of society, is that you open safe havens for them, youth centers. And yesterday, if those who have my number, I think only Atif has my number, Abdullah has my number, Shasa will see when they, they will tell you, and Isa Khan will tell you he's very, very close and heavily involved in our work as well. We opened a youth center in Bradford. 8,000 square foot, 8,000 square foot, we have offices, 36 seater canteen, we have 5 65 inch smart TVs, we have 3 PlayStation 5s, an Xbox, uh, I forgot what it is, Exos, Exos, something like this, I don't know, <laughs> never played Xbox, but somebody's donated an Xbox, we have 3 table tennis tables, we have 3 pool tables, we have an indoor space to play for a side football. We have a 250 inch screen, 250 inch, six meters by five meters screen for showing live football, broadcasting football and boxing. It's a 150, 200 seater little area that parents, sons, daughters, fathers, mothers can come. We will have mental health classes. We will have the, uh, a villa, uh, facilities for the disabled. We will do antisocial work to speak out against antisocial behavior. We will offer so much to our public. The Lord Mayor came yesterday. Leader of the Council came yesterday. Councillors came. Up and coming world future boxing champions like Amin Janzeb and, and Akim Fiyaz. They came. We will have jujitsu classes there. We will have boxing classes there. Karate classes there for children and for adults. We have a youth center space. All of this, which cost us 70,000 pounds. We managed to raise 22,000 in Ramadan. We bought a 17-seater minibus for this project as well. 
And we've called the project the Faith Cave. The Faith Cave. After Ashab al Kahf. The sleepers of the cave. إذ أبى الفتح إلى الكهف وقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا. I remember when the youth sought refuge to the cave and they ran looking for a safe haven somewhere where they can be safe. They can feel warm, protected. Somewhere where they are not in danger. That's what the kids need today. Especially those in key stage two and key stage three. We've invested into this youth center in Bradford. We call it Club 1810. Club 1810. Chapter number 18, verse number 10. Is our fitya to Ilal Kahfi, Wakalu Rabbana, I could have gone and opened another masjid, another Al Hikam, another Madrasa. I could have, but I said no. This opportunity has landed on our doorstep to open a center of, for the youth, a community center for the people. We must invest into this. So those who are partners with me in this project, I said, let's do it. Boom, let's go. And we started. Yesterday we had over 200, a young five, six year old, won an Umrah ticket. He reached Jumu'at al hikam he came and I was so happy he won it. And from all of them he won. We had uh, a, the electrician who was doing some of the works there. He won a uh, raffle, two tickets to Disneyland. He says, I don't want it. So we put it back in. <laughs> Somebody else won it. And that kid who won it, Safi, he is Jumu'at al hikam as well. <laughs> and he came and he won. Uh, we had a Manchester United shirt, raffle. And you wouldn't believe who won it. <laughs> it says I don't want it. I said, bro, you've got to take this. Put it on and send me a picture. And he's a hard one. And he won it. And he won it. <laughs> so I'm saying, this vision project that we have, this was a dream of mine, it's become a reality. Atif has the same objective. He wants to do the same thing here. He's going to butter my brains over food today, I know. How do you do it? What do you do? You know how hard it is. It's quick, but he don't move slow. He moves quick. Tell me, I'm sorry, where do I go? I'm going to tell Atif all over, you know, this, do it. This. I will, I'll help him as much as I can. Starting with today, we've come, he's invited us. But I am someone who's from far away. You here need to help him. And it's not him, help this organization. This area is bigger than him. He will go tomorrow, Allah give him long life, but his work will stay. This work will stay. Invest in this mission and project. For this is for the youth, for the children of your community. Give back to your people. Help them, volunteer, support them. All you need to do in order for you to be safe around children is to get your disclosure barring service, DBS. Simple. As long as you've got your DBS, which is clean record, no criminality, nothing like that, you're clean, boom, you can start. You come in, you volunteer, give an hour, give two hours. Chill with them, play PS5 with them. Invest in a minibus, take them out, go watch Peterborough play. Then it what lead to? Lead to Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Duncan, what's his name? Dan? Still there? Yeah, look at Alex Ferguson's son. And it runs in the blood. Now you're championship, tomorrow you might be Premier League. <laughs> or League One. <laughs> After that. So we don't know, man. But take them to Peterborough football club. Take them out. Take them to, uh, uh, I don't know, Hollywood Ball. Go play bowling with them. And the kids want enjoyment. Win their hearts by being close to them. And then watch tomorrow, they will always come back to you. They will never forget, these are moments, children never forget their youth. I don't forget my youth. We all remember what we did when we were kids, they were good times. However it was, whether we were playing pitu in the back garden, or whether we were playing football, with your jumpers as goalposts. You know, they were good times. Create memories for these children. Work for these children. And this is the work, exactly what we need. Education youth centers. That's what this is. This is an educational youth center 
where they get Islamic education and they get secular education, where they get a youth center for children to come and be themselves and do what they need. And that's the most important thing. I hope that you will support him, you will help him, and you will be a strong, strong uh, foundation and base for him. You've got to believe in this mission and project. And tomorrow, inshallah, it will go strength to strength. Today we're here, tomorrow we'll be in a bigger building. Allah give him more success where work is happening. And you guys need to support that and do that. Sorry I've taken too much time. You know, we don't have long.